Hi students and welcome back to the Sunday school class. In the past few lessons we have seen Israel's demand for a king. God helping them to appoint a king. The life of the first king Saul then onwards to king David and his son Solomon. The people of Israel united under the reign of king David and king Solomon even prospered and lived peacefully for many years. However, after Solomon, there were weaker kings and the kingdom of Israel and Judah began to fall. The people dispersed, did not listen to God, and the efforts of the prophets in bringing back the people and the king back to God were in vain. Now before we jump into the lesson today, let's look at a short video about bargaining for shoes. How is it going to connect to our lesson today? Let's see. Welcome to ABC. How may I help you? Can I take a look at the shoes behind the glass window? You have good taste. These shoes are the most popular in ABC. I really like the style. How much are these? It's a brand new product. Hot piece of cake right out of an oven. It's $68. Oh no. It's too expensive. I only have a few dollars in my pocket. Can I have some discount? Oh, no. I'm really sorry, sweetie. This is the fixed price. Why don't you take a look at the products in the corner? They are all on sale. Do you have size 5 for these? Of course. Try these. Um... I think these are too small for me. Can I have one size bigger? Size six? Let me get back to you in a sec. Let's try these, sweetie. How are these? Perfect. I love it. I will take these. How do you like to make your payment? Credit card or cash? Cash. Here you are. Here's your $5 change. Thanks for coming. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. I really love the shoes. What were the trading items in the video? Money. For shoes. Now students, I want you to think about the things that you will promise to your classmates if you were to be elected the class monitor at the start of the year. Things like, I'll give you chocolates once a month, won't complain to the teacher or write your name on the board if you are a little bit noisy, help you with copying the homework, things like that. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to promise them things in exchange for being elected as a class monitor. Now the politicians in our country, a few corrupt politicians, do go about securing votes of the people during elections in the wrong ways. Let's see a short video about this. Hey. Hey, bhai, तुम्हारे पिता से पूछा बोले पता नहीं भाई से पूछा पता नहीं हम लोग शाम को अक्सर यहीं मिलते हैं अरे ये कोई रहने की जगह है ये तो खंडर है अब की इलेक्शन में अगर मैं जीत गया तो तुम्हारे लिए क्लब बनवा दूंगा जहां एक लाइब्रेरी होगी स्टेज होगा खेलने के लिए जगह होगी रहने दीजिए सब कहने की बातें होती हैं 
एक बार जीत गए तो सब भूल जाते पिछली बार गिरधारी पांडे ने भी ऐसे ही कहा था कहा था मैं थाने में खबर कर दूंगा ताकि पुलिस तुम्हारे मामले में कोई दखल न दे लेकिन क्या किया उसने हाँ और मजा देखा कॉलेज में जब मारपीट हुई तो सबसे पहले मुझे को पकड़ा मैंने गिरधारी पांडे का नाम बताया तो भाई गौर तुम मानोगे नहीं वो एक मामूली हवलदार ससुरा कहता है गिरधारी विरधारी हमें मत दिखाओ डोंट एसोसिएट माई ने विदार गिरधारी विरधारी वो इलेक्शन में हार गया था मुझे जीतने दो फिर वो इंस्पेक्टर अगर तुम्हारी मदद नहीं करता तो सात दिन के अंदर मैं उसका तबादला करा दूंगा अनदर वर्ड फॉर दिस टाइप ऑफ एक्सचेंज इज कॉल्ड हॉर्स ट्रेडिंग डज इट रिफर टू बाइंग एंड सेलिंग हॉर्सेस नॉट एट ऑल इट रिफर्स टू पॉलिटिशियंस बाइंग एंड सेलिंग सपोर्ट इन द वीडियो वी जस्ट सो द पॉलिटिशियन ट्रेडेड वोट्स फॉर ट्रांसफरिंग द पुलिसमैन who had jailed the youth it is not enough to say that they are selling their support together with this they are trading the future of society and the country let's discuss what are the dangers of horse trading how can this kind of game ruin the life of the people in the country let us reflect to the experiences of the people of god after the death of king solomon yes israel finally had its wonder of the world where the priests conducted the daily sacrifices and drew the presence of god onto the earth it was king solomon's crowning achievement but it wasn't cheap that's okay we'll let the next guy worry about the budget deficit enter the next guy rehoboam Solomon's son, King Rehoboam, ascends the throne, and right off the bat, he gets hit with complaints from the ten northern tribes. See, in order to build that temple, Solomon had to raise taxes and enforce labor. But now that the temple was complete, the ten northern tribes didn't think it was unreasonable to ask for a tax cut. Rehoboam consulted his advisors. Now he has two sets of counsel. There's the old, wizened, and weathered elders who served his father. Their suggestion: ease up and speak to them gently, and they will be your servants forever. or he could listen to his young upstart advisors who felt he should show them who's boss guess which one he chose rehoboam comes down hard proclaiming quote my father chastised you with whips i will chastise you with scorpions so the northern tribes breaks it forming the northern kingdom of israel one of solomon's former ministers jeroboam receives a prophecy that he not rehoboam would be the next king Having led the Israelites in asking for the reduced tax burden, he takes up the charge to rebel and becomes king of the north. Meanwhile, Rehoboam is left with the southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, known as the Kingdom of Judah. So, if Saul was anointed in 879 BCE and Rehoboam got his shot at kingship in 796, it took a little they both falter. In the north, Jeroboam doesn't like that Judah has the temple. So, Jeroboam makes his own temple. actually two of them one in the tribe of Dan and one in Bethel but he decides to go a little off brand choosing for his mascot the golden calf word of advice when you're trying to make a name for yourself don't pick your nation's all-time biggest failure in the south where hoboam isn't doing much better he is about 17 years where he forsakes bible law and suffers attacks from the egyptians and the ethiopians oh and all the alliances that have been built with surrounding countries the philistines the moabites the edomites they're out Following the split are a cascade of reigning kings all with varying degrees of success, scandals, overthrows and wars. In the north, Jeroboam dies and his son takes over, but then he's killed by one of his army officers. They go through a few more reigns as one military commander kills the king, assumes the throne and then is killed by another army general. You sir, Prince Rabit. We land on Omri in 884, who's an effective ruler, increasing trade and commerce and even ambitiously builds a Jerusalem of the north, Samaria, with not a temple but a glorious citadel. making it his new capital. But possibly his most famous act is marrying off his son Ahab to the Phoenician princess Jezebel. We'll come back to this. Back in the south, it's pretty much the same sort of marching monarch conga line. Eventually a man named Asa assumes the throne in the south and rather than murder or war his way to securing power, he makes the country pull a spiritual 180, ridding the southern kingdom of idols. He even takes his grandmothers. That's courage. So, Asa is one of the few kings the Bible actually praises. But does that help him in his continual wars against the north? 
Not really, as the Northern Kingdom's troops actually come as close as five miles from taking Jerusalem, and Asa is forced to turn to Damascus for help, offering gold and silver from the temple and his own palace. King Ben-Hadad I attacks from Aram Damascus, what today would be known as Syria, forcing the north to retreat in crushing defeat. The whole Jewish civil war jumps the shark when Ahab and Jezebel are confronted by the prophet Elijah for their appalling institutionalization of idolatry throughout Israel. The Book of Kings even goes so far as to call Ahab the worst king thus far. But fiction can't compare to fact and the magnitude of evil as he and his wife rounded up and murdered over 300 Jewish prophets and brought idolatry back to the land. The kingdoms drag on for a few more reigns, but it isn't long before the northern kingdom was decimated piece by piece and the southern kingdom was conquered, leading to the first exile in 422 BCE. Unity has always been a bit tricky for the independent-minded Jewish people, whether wandering through the desert or debating politics of modern Israel. They had a great moment of utopian unity at Mount Sinai, but within 40 days they had already had the golden calf debacle. Perhaps that explains the prophecy of Ezekiel, that the nation's true long-term unity will only happen at the end of days. But despite the upheaval, the Jewish people of the great kingdoms of Judah and Israel never completely lost their bonds to their culture, history, pride, and a return to religious fidelity, even if it had to come about through exile. The two books of kings show a clear distinction between the two kingdoms. On the one hand, the kingdom of Judah, always ruled by a descendant from David, is seen as basically faithful to the covenant of the chosen people with their God. The kingdom of Israel, however, is seen from its beginning as straying from the covenant, representing God by the images of a golden calf or bull. As a consequence, Israel experienced continual political unrest. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says, the people of God in particular, their kings, will enjoy prosperity only if they remain faithful to the covenant with God. Otherwise, they will be condemned to trouble within the kingdom and invasions by their enemies. If the king is the one to first betray the covenant, then he is responsible for the ruin of the nation. Students, requesting you now to take a prayerful posture, sit back straight, hands on your lap, breathe in deeply and let it out, breathe in, breathe out and while this moment of silence is among us. Let us listen to God's word through one incident of intrigue soon after the death of Solomon, which came to be traditionally called the sin of Jeroboam. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Jeroboam ruled in Israel in the north. He was jealous that the people went to worship in Jerusalem in the south and imagined that because of this, King Rehoboam of the south would become more popular. So he, together with his counsellors, built two shrines in their northern kingdom, erected golden calves and instructed the people to worship there. Rather, than go to the temple in Jerusalem. For the sake of his own glory, the king had sinned himself and entrenched other people into sin. As Jeroboam was standing and offering sacrifice, God's message came to him and said, Thus says the Lord, A son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who offer incense. The altar shall be torn down, and it came to pass that way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
the word of the lord thanks be to god this is exactly what happens when people in authority sell their honor and right judgment and connive with others to lead people astray when we refuse to live by god's law the end result can never be prosperity for all we need to convince ourselves that it does not pay to look selfishly to our own needs and manipulate others to achieve them our leaders today too face the same temptation and we need to watch out that we are not misled by them let us pray for god's wisdom for the leaders as well as for us mark 8 verses 36 says what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul how does the story of the divided kingdom help us understand the meaning of the phrase the